opportunities for the development of our country, for the good of your people. And so, God, we ask you will stamp out from any person in this community or these communities, from any person in this country, stamp out, take out, oh God, all the seeking to build up our country even better than it was before. Bless us as we go forth this night in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening to the people of Wesley and Woodford Hill, including palm trees. Let me first of all recognize the Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Minister of Housing and Lands, the Honorable Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Reginald Austry, also Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries. Also recognize the presence of our other cabinet members, Honorable Dennis Charles, Honorable Dr. Colin McIntyre, and Honorable Rosalind Paul. Mr. Chris Timmins from MMC, Mr. Joseph Morvan, Mr. Fidel Grant, Ms. Gloria Schillingford, recognize the chairman, Mr. Brown Philip. Thank you, Lonita, and Mr. Dodds, Reverend Dodds. The people of Woodford Hill and Wesley, I will invite the chairman of the Wesley Village Council to bid us a hearty welcome to our proceedings tonight. Good evening to all. The Honorable Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, political leader of the Dominican Labour Party, Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, the Honorable Reginald Austry, the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, the Honorable Dr. Colin McIntyre, the Minister of Public Works, Water and Resource Management. The Honorable Rosen Paul, Minister of Commerce and Small Business Enterprise. The Honorable Miss Denise, Denise Charles, sorry, Parliamentary Representative for the Sufri Constituency. Mr. Reginald Savre, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Lands and Housing. Reverend, Everett, Reverend Evans Dodds. Mr. Fidel Grant, sorry, candidate for the Dominica Labour Party for the West Sea Woodford Hill constituency. Mr. Joseph Morvan, technical laser officer in the Prime Minister's office. Mr. Christopher Timmins, the managing director of MMCE Limited. Members of the IACCEC committee. Ms. Leneta Cadet lady who just sang the national anthem. Residents of Wesley, Palm Tree, and Woodford Hill, diasporans in attendance, all who are listening through the mediums. On behalf of the Wesley Village Council, it is call upon me to invite, sorry, to welcome each and every one of us to this long overdue town hall meeting. I hope and pray that this session will be very informative and interactive. And let us all sit back and relax as we see all the plans that are due in the future for West Woodford Hill and Palm Tree. I thank you. Thank you, Chairman Philip. As a member of this community, I would like to extend also my welcome to my fellow villagers from Woodford Hill, and by extension, my extended village of Wesley, including the areas of Palm Tree. We also like to recognize members of the, commu the neighboring communities, knowing that we are all integrated, especially the community of Marigat and <laughs> residents extending to Kalibishi. We know that your presence here is appreciated and what we have come to do this, this evening is to present to you government's plan for housing development specifically in the community of Wesley and Woodford Hill. What has brought up this urgency and the need to discuss housing at a very community level? 
There are two things that is happening right now that is very critical. One, as we have moved on two years after Hurricane Maria, there are many individuals who are concerned about their welfare, especially the ability to provide adequate shelter for their families. In the heart of what is going on and considering that we are in an agricultural belt in Dominica, many of us have been constrained by the ability to afford homes for ourselves. And considering the impact and the devastation that has been brought upon us as a result of Hurricane Maria, it has compounded the problems that we already had suffering before Maria. So therefore, it is on the onus on us as a community to see what we can do to provide adequate, affordable housing to our residents and ourselves. But we want to do it better. As the Honorable Prime Minister has articulated since Tropical Storm Erica, we are on a mission to build back better. And then we have further articulated that we will make Dominica the first climate resilient country in the world. And this means that everything we'll build back better with, we have to thread through resilience in there. So it is important that we build homes that are resilient. We have gone through many storms. And we remember in the glorious 80s, in the green gold days, when our major issue was the loss of our banana fields. We used to see all these losses. And it is a serious situation when it moved away from our fields and now it's our homes and therefore our lifestyle. It is important that collectively, between government and community, we join hands together to see how we can respond adequately to the demand of housing that is brought upon us here in Dominica, particularly in Wesley and Woodford Hill. And so, this is what brought us here tonight. We are here to discuss housing and to provide you with basic information that government has sat down and planned out and intended to contribute towards the development of the communities and by the individuals by extension. We are also in a development zone. Not only here is some of the best lands for agricultural development, but it's also a major economic hub. And as you will know, that all the major developments that is going to take place in the communities surrounding in the Northeast, it is critical that we do not leave ourselves behind in terms of having adequate housing that is affordable, that is resilient, that is sustainable, and it's a reflection of the pride and the quality of lives that we, the people of Wesley and Woodford Hill, has known, has continued to be, and want to continue to be in the near future. So as we continue to spend time tonight, we're going to have presentations on the housing developments that we plan to have in the area and also other developments that we would like to pursue, would like to do some introduction to this. So we have here Mr. Chris Timmins. We also have here Mr. Joseph Morvan, who will give side presentations on what we're gonna do, and follow we'll have our feature address by the Honorable Prime Minister, who will articulate clearly the basis, the rationale, and the reasoning for us to actually develop these beautiful communities of Wesley and Woodford Hill. So with this, my dear friends, families, comrades, schoolmates, and all those who have, we have grown up together, we are here together with a plan for development of our communities, and I think it is a good time to start by sharing those information with you. So without much ado, I would like to invite Mr. Christopher Timmins, who is the Managing Director of Montreal, management consulting enterprise who has in partnership with government continued to provide a very sustainable resilient housing solution acting through government and this is what our plans is for you the people of Wesley and Woodford Hill. Thank you. Good evening. First, let me recognize the presence of the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Roosevelt Skerek, 
The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Reginald Ostry, Honourable Cabinet Members, Permanent Secretaries, Mr. Fidel Grant, Mr. Braun Phillip, Members of the media, and most importantly, residents. Well, it's certainly testing our personal climate resilience coming up here tonight. It's a great pleasure to be here, to be allowed to show you the plans for Wesley and Woodford Hill housing developments, as well as Wesley Health Centre. We at MMCE are extremely proud of the trust that the government places in us to develop these new communities in accordance with their intent to create the world's first climate resilient nation. We will only present to you concrete plans, in every sense of the word, for actual projects which will be started and finished. We have, we believe, demonstrated this so far, that every project we have shown is underway and well on its way to completion. And we are well on the way to complete nearly a thousand new homes this year and the keys given to new residents as well. As I'm sure everyone is well aware, the biggest challenge of our present times and going forward is climate change and the consequences this appears to be having on established weather patterns. We were here during Maria and observed how the simple details that had never given trouble before suddenly became major problems. For example, a lack of a proper threshold on an external door to prevent water coming in. Insufficient drainage on balconies, allowing water to build up and enter through the balcony doors. Roofs that would have survived if there had been a few more fixing on the ridge caps. We have taken note of all these and incorporated, we believe, details to prevent these problems in the future. Of course, you are getting a complete reinforced concrete structure with a concrete pitched roof under the terracotta galvanized, which is there for aesthetic purposes, as well as providing an additional barrier. The structures are designed for seismic activity. Windows are certified hurricane proof, and all that we can do to make them hurricane proof, we will do. Solar water heating is provided along with low energy light fittings. All the services, electricity, water, telecommunications, is underground. It can't be lost in a storm. You know, we presently have 51 Dominican contractors employed in our projects throughout the country. And please be assured, local contractors from this area will be given opportunities. But we also... Rec okay. No, but we also require commitment from those contractors and a high level of skills and standards. If you don't do it correctly, it gets taken out and you redo it at your own cost. If you don't turn up on time and cause a delay to another contractor, you're going to be charged. If you don't provide the correct materials, you won't be installing it. Be honest about your capabilities. Show us what you've done in the past. Be aware that the start to finish program on these two housing projects is 12 months. Don't be like the guy who came to see me last week, trying to convince me to give him a $3 million project, then asked me to lend him $20 so he'd get home as things were a bit tight. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at the plans. First short video to show you what's been achieved in the last 15 months. This is actually Bellevue show pan in front of you. Castle Bruce residents are now moving in as we speak. The leases will be Christmas. Grand Fond will be the first week in December. La Plaine is next week for the first building.
Wesley is going to be 57 individual votes. that you all have to fill in so that the housing ministry can work out exactly what's required. So I urge you all to get your applications in quickly so we can start quickly. So this is a completed house and you can see how nice they look. Now I think it's time to move on to Woodford Hill. Woodford Hill is a different solution. We are going to follow their 48 three-bedroom residences. These are following on from the model which has been successful down in the south. They're three-bedroom, they're two-bathroom, one ensuite. Again, we're going to guarantee these will survive anything. They're nuclear shelters really, made to look pretty. Now the health centre. We're building the new, we've cleared the ground, we're building the new health centre in Wesley. This will be... <laughs> this will be a sister to the health centre we're also started in Marigot. Okay, this one. Each health centre has two overnight beds, it has doctor's clinics, it's got nurses clinics, it's got a pharmacy. Upstairs is a, an apartment which will accommodate up to four nurses for staying overnight. And of course these two new health centres will only serve to provide in partnership with the new all northeastern hospital which is also commencing as we speak ground explorations are going on the fencing has gone up and very shortly we'll be commencing the foundations okay. so uh, that really concludes the presentation but as i say particularly and the ministry will say to you it's vitally important that we know the combination of four bedroom and three bedroom residences that are required. So please provide the information so we can move forward very, very quickly. Thank you. So in an effort to get the information that Mr. Timmins needs, we have at the back the forms, the application forms, will invite you at some course of the time during this week and the coming weeks that you provide as much information possible to the Ministry of Housing and Lands. We have the application forms, you are invited to apply. Now, I would like to inform that these housing are on the same basis as we have been doing across the island. As you have demonstrated through the pictures, and the videos that we have been building houses across the country and as recent as last Saturday we have handed over keys to 59 families in Grand Form.
we want to make it ensure we have design that will satisfy the combination of families. We would like to have that combination established long before we even design the buildings completely. Thank you. At this time, I would like us to move on with the program. And we're going to invite Mr. Joseph Morvan, who will give us a special address. Mr. Morvan. Pleasant good evening, all. Let me recognize our Prime Minister, Right Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, our Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Reginald Ostry, all the cabinet ministers, Mr. Colin McIntyre, Mrs. Rosen Paul, Mr. Dennis, <laughs> Dennis, Dennis Charles, uh, Mr. Timmins from MMCE, Mr. Grant, uh, uh, Liberal Party representative or correction candidate for the Wesley constituency, P.S. Regisavre, and you, the members from Wesley, the Wesley community. And with Fordale and Marigot, palm tree. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in Dominica, we have been hearing, dreaming, wishing and talking about the construction of an international airport for decades. This dream is now becoming a reality. And that is simply because we are blessed with a prime minister who does not only speak promises, but delivers on every promise made. It is imperative, therefore, that we should try our best to retain that blessing for as long as possible. However, whenever there is any form of development taking place, it creates an impact on individuals and the wider community at large. These impacts comes in two forms, the negative impact, which most of us don't like, and the positive ones. So therefore, it is imperative during the planning phases of any project, proper assessment must be carried out to mitigate against these impacts. Ladies and gentlemen, numerous surveys were conducted in the preparation for the construction of this longed-for international airport. This is a facility that will be able to accommodate massive flying vessels. These vessels will transport both people and cargo in large amounts. In Dominica, we are blessed with rivers, valleys, hills, and mountains. And that's why we sing of these rich and rare gifts in our national anthem. However, to accommodate these vessels, we need large areas of flat land, very flat land. Since our intention and best economic interest is to accommodate aircrafts that require large ground space for operation, with safety at our, as our watchword, assessments were done, and every survey conducted in the search for a suitable location to build the international airport yielded the same result, and that is the Wesley Whitbordel area. Therefore, within this area, the best possible site had to be chosen, and that would enable aircraft to operate in the safest possible way into and out of the airport when it is constructed. The precise selection was based on a site evaluation criteria that include flat land because you need large space for the huge aircrafts. The wind because the aircraft need, la um, need to land and take off into the wind for the safest possible operation. Landing and takeoff is the most crucial part of any flight. That is when things can go wrong in quick time. So we need to ensure safety 
especially at those crucial times. The other criteria that was used, and which is most important, is an obstruction analysis in accordance with IKO obstruction surface on approach and takeoff. That is, there should be no obstruction within the flight path that would create a safety hazard for aircraft landing or departing from the facility. In the area that we selected, there are no hills or mountains on either ends of the runway, and that was one of the major criteria for the selection of this site. Any other site that was suggested or that had been suggested would have a prohibited approach and departure at certain times and at all times. To make you to understand it, to have you to understand this better, we can take, for example, our existing Douglas Jazz Airport, and you will notice that you have never seen an aircraft departing westbound, that is, from the sea into the mountains. That is prohibited at all times. And during the night, you will never find an aircraft approaching from the mountains to land. So that's sometimes or nighttime prohibition at the Douglas Charles Airport. However, as a result of this development, the airport project, a great number of you, the residents of Wesley and Palm Tree, will be impacted. You'll have to be displaced. Some of you will have to be displaced. Hence the reason for the MMC solution right here. So your government has your back. The good news is that though, of all the possible negative impacts this development may create on you, the residents of Wesley and Palm Tree and adjacent communities, the government has placed measures to mitigate against these negative impacts. But the positive impact far outweighs all the possible negative impacts which may be apparent. And that is, the project will commence with soil testing. We refer to it as the geotech survey. And from the initiation of this geotech survey, you will have immediate employment for you, the people of Wesley and Palm Tree, Whitford Hill, Marigot, and the extending communities. This immediate employment will not only be limited to heavy equipment operators and truck drivers, but also chainsaw operators and vendors, because you're going to have many people coming to the area to work and they will need to eat whenever they are hungry. So we see from the initiation the benefits that you, the people of Wesley and with Fordale, are going to inherit. After the testing phase, we're going to move directly into the clearing of the land and the actual construction, hence the need for more, much more workers of all different scale sorts. And I need not mention at this time the employment opportunities that will exist upon completion of that airport. So very soon, we will see movements in this area because soil testing can commence almost immediately in the palm tree area, Armour Estate, and Joe. Now this testing will be done by a recognized American firm, which has done the procurement for the soil testing and is helping us with all the technical designs and advice as we go along in accordance with IKO annexes as recommended and, pra and practiced by IQ uh, member states. So ladies and gentlemen of Wesley and surrounding, you need to prepare yourselves for the best thing that can ever happen to Dominica at this time. Make the use of the opportunities ahead. The construction of, this, of the international airport is a game changer that will transform the economic landscape of Wesley of Wesley and surrounding communities and the entire Dominica as it relates to aviation. We've been longing for it. Our Prime Minister is making it happen for us. So let us embrace it.
Thank you very much. If there are any questions on anything that you have heard and are not clear on you, me ask, or if you want to ask later, let me ask the question now. Okay, so then question and answers afterwards. You, you spoke about um, soil testing. Now, this soil testing, from my understanding, is going to take place within the vicinity itself, the, the marked off area, where there are residential people. My question is, what are the implications for existing residents who would come in line with this testing? The soil testing will only be performed after the residence has been relocated. And hence the reason why I said it can almost immediately commence in the palm tree area, the Amo Estate, and Joe, because these areas are uninhabited. Okay, so if there are no more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chilot. <laughs> and we hope it will get clearer. Because at this time, we will not waste a moment. He has been our Prime Minister since 2004. He has worked with us in the good times and the bad times. And now as we are about to take West Yan Woodford Hill to the next level, we'll invite him to share with us as our Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Housing and Lands. So let us give a round of applause and welcome Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt. Thank you very much. Let me recognize the presence of our Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Reginald Austri, my cabinet colleagues who are here with us as well. I also want to recognize in a special way Reverend Dr. Dodd, who prayed for us, Mr. Chris Timmins of MMC, Mr. Fidel Grant the Dominican Labour Party candidate for the Westy constituency. <laughs> Mrs. Gloria Schillenford, our former PAL rep. <laughs> the chairman of the Wesley Village Council and the chairman of the Woodford Hill Village Council. <laughs> I also want to recognize Ms. Alfinia Benjamin. P.S. P.S. Sever and the staff of the Ministry of Housing, our visiting Dominicans. I see many of you here. Welcome, welcome home, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen from Woodfordale, Wesley, Palm Tree, and Marigot. And of course, those who are listening and viewing via live broadcast of this town hall meeting. Friends all, good evening. I am very happy to be here with you in Wesley to share with you some of the plans for this constituency and of course the wider Dominican. I will say to you from the outset 
that the future of this constituency and the future of Dominica is certainly bright. And I am very optimistic about the future of our country. You know, as I said, in every disappointment, there's a blessing in disguise. And when we were hit by this hurricane, many of us were without hope. We were in profound state of anxiety. We did not know what our tomorrow would be like, having seen the destruction wrought on our country and our families and our communities by Hurricane Maria. And we did not know where we would start and how we would start rebuilding our communities, rebuilding our country. And I dare say that we all must be grateful to the good Lord for bringing us where we are today, just two years later. Because for a small country like ours, with very limited resources, we do not have oil, we do not have gold, we only have our people and our water. And what we have been able to do together in this country, we have been utilizing in large measure our own resources, our own money. Because the pledges which have been made to us to assist us in rebuilding and building our country have not started reaching our shores. Because these international organizations have a certain process to follow and that process sometimes take, takes a little more time than we would like for it to take. And so every home that we have fixed outside of the assistance received by NGOs came from the government of Dominic. Every bridge that we have fixed, every home that we have assisted, every home that we have built, every school that we have fixed, the funds came from the government of Dominic, utilizing the citizenship by investment program. And so we are here today to say to you, and I will speak first about the international airport. I believe that as it is now, the only missing link for our country now is the international airport. With the hotels under construction and the hotels opening, with a resurgence in agriculture and agricultural expansion, with our program to construct a new cruise village and a new port, improvement to our infrastructure, improvement in our health facilities, the international airport is what we need in Dominica. And I want to say a special thanks to all of you in the path of the airport who have been so understanding because I know what it is and understand what it is to ask somebody to sell their home or to sell their land that you've been occupying for generations. But I do not want to come and take your land and not have the money to pay you the next day. We want to ensure that once you agree on a selling price to the government, we'll be in a position to pay you immediately so you do not find yourselves waiting for months to get paid. And I also understand that many of you do not want to leave Wesley and leave Woodfordale. You want to stay here. And we have identified government-owned lands that in some instances where people want an exchange, there could be an exchange for the land that you have and the land that we have. And some of the homes that we have about to build, we are making provision for many of you who will be impacted by this, by the sale of your residences. And we do not want to come and give you um, any type of home. We want to give you a comfortable home, a home that is resilient, well built, and can certainly elevate your standard here in the West Lane Woodford area. So this, what you, what you saw on the screen tonight 
That is what we'll deliver to you in Wesley and Woodford. And the old concrete roofs, we have placed the galvanized just for decorative purposes. But the old concrete roofs, completely concrete structure, ensuring that it's safe. And I will say to you, my friends, that we have the money for the international airport in our neighborhood. Because it is written, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And so I followed that instruction. And I did knock. And the door wasn't opening as fast as I wanted to open. And I knocked again. And I kept knocking. And thank God that door just opened up. And you saw some people came to Wesley yesterday with me. They came to see the site. They came to see where we're going to build the airport. Because they came from their country to bring a special message to me from their leader. And so the money to build the international airport has been secured. What we'll be doing now is go through the testing, the soil testing. And we're starting with the lands where they're not occupied. So the question which Mr. Prince asked, it won't affect the residential area yet until we have relocated you so we can do the testing where the residences are located, mainly in Wesley. So we are approaching this thing in a very respectful manner and a, and a very sensi sensitive way. We do not want us to come and acquire a land like this as was done in the past with no plans and no understanding of the impact on the lives of people. And so I want to thank you and I know that what you have done as property owners, which is so really beautiful, that you're able to put yourself in a committee, organize yourself, and you have been able to engage the government, engage the government officials, so it is a sharing of information as we go along. So you are part of the process, and the project is not coming as a surprise or in a surreptitious manner. It is coming because you're part of it, and that's what's going to happen. And so, when this airport is completed, we can understand the total transformation of this part of Dominica, and indeed the country as a whole. And you know, when we said we were going to build five-star hotels, when we said we were going to build internationally branded hotels, there are some in our midst who said that will never happen. Which, which, which hotel can, which five star hotel can come into Dominica? Which international brand will come to Dominica? But we have Kempinski, we have Marriott, we have Hilton. And Kempinski is open. 160 rooms. Employing dozens and dozens of young people. And the farmers and the fishermen stand to benefit directly with the sale of agricultural produce, the sale of fish and the other confectionaries that we have in our country. So there are direct benefits and indirect benefits to us. And we have to thank God for these things. Because just two years ago, we were impacted. We were right down on our knees. We did not know what was going to happen to us in weeks and months ahead. And yes, there is a long road to travel, but we have started the journey. And it's a matter for us to work together, putting our skills, our talents together to help our country move forward. Being negative is not going to answer our challenges. Criticizing in, in a non-constructive manner is not going to make things better for us. And spending a whole day and year and month attacking one person called Russell Skerritt is not going to make the price of sugar go down on the shelves. Because I keep saying to us, you build a country on vision and hope. Not on criticizing, not on being negative. On vision and hope. Because it is written that where there is no vision, the people perish. And we have been able to articulate a vision for this country. We have been able to articulate a strategy for this country. We have been able to articulate a plan for this country. And we have been able to tell you, the citizens of Dominica, where the monies will come from to assist us in implementing that vision for our country.
And mark you. We declared the vision to create the world's first climate resilient nation a mere four days after the hurricane. Who will be thinking about so far when we were roofless and had no access to water, could not get from one street to the next in Dominica? And when we said this to the world, the world was in total amazement and dumbfounded. How is this country that is flat on its knees coming to the United Nations and say that it's going to build the world's first climate resilient nation? Maybe they, ask, they should be asking us for rations or something like that instead. And as time went by, we started to put flesh on the bones of this vision and the world has been with us ever since. Ever since helping us to get this vision implemented. And so what is required for us here in this constituency and Dominica as a whole is for us to work together. Because if you want, the question is, where do you want Dominica to be in 10 and 15 and 20 years? And what is going to, what is, what is going to be your own personal contribution to that goal? And you have a part to play in this. So the hotels are there. I am really happy for there's so many young people who, who um, have applied and have gotten jobs. And as I said last night in the valley, what touched me was I went to Kempinski and having breakfast there and I saw a gentleman came from the kitchen and he came to the serving area and he reached out to me and he said, Prime Minister, thank you for this hotel because because of this hotel, I have a job now. A poor person like me, I am working in a five-star hotel and that touched me because that's what we're seeking to do. We're seeking to raise people up, create opportunities with the hope that they will take advantage of the opportunities. Housing. We have decided that we will build 5,000 resilient homes for our citizens. And we're well on our way to doing so. And you here with the 105 residences that we are presenting to you tonight is just, this is not all. This is just the first phase of the housing program in this constituency. And I know many of you in Woodford in particular, single, par single parent families, you have no land because of the land issues there. You want to build a home and some parts of Wesley as well. And we're seeking to address this housing problem so that our situation can be much better than it is currently. And I am criticized because some say I am giving people handouts, but I said to them, you see, you say that because you, you don't understand people and you don't understand how people live and you don't understand people's circumstances, their dreams and their aspirations and their frustrations. But I'm not giving nobody a hand, hand out, I'm giving people a hand up. A hand up we're giving people. Because you know, there are some people who, when they get to positions or when they want to get to positions or they think they have a position, they forget from whence they came. They forget from whence they came. And when you are placed in a position that you're able to help people, you must not help them based on your circumstance or your past. You have to make life better for them. And it is not because I, I paid for my education at university. I mopped floors in America. I cooked. I washed dishes. I served people to help pay for school. I paid school sometimes on credit cards. I joined the school band, not able to play any musical instrument. I used to carry the instrument from the bus to the, to the storeroom. But they, they would pay me some money and that money went to my tuition fees. But it's not because I went through a struggle to get an education 
I should say to succeeding generations, you should go through the same struggles. No, that's not what life is about. Life is about making things better for the succeeding generations. And I knew, I knew what walking to school was, was like. Not because my, parent, my parents couldn't afford to pay the bus fare for me, but because there were few buses at the time in Vegas. And I would walk from PSS to Doden, PSS to Blenheim sometimes. School ends at 1 o'clock, 9 miles from PSS to Vegas, but I would get home after 6, after 5, after 4 in the afternoon. So not because I walk to school, I must tell children that they have to walk to school now. No. If we have the ability to provide transportation to them and make life better for them and their families, then that, that's what we have done. And in providing free transportation to the students, is a cost to the state? Yes. But I believe that it is money well spent. It's an investment in our young people. And you know, you here in Wesley and in Marigot and so forth in Woodford Hill, we provide free transportation to the students. But just imagine a family has three children going to school at the same time. And you have to pay, what, 50 or 60 dollars from Woodford Hill to this school here. You are a housewife. Your, father, your, your, your husband is a farmer. For anybody, that can, be, that can be a lot of money. And so, we are, we are saying to you, keep that money so you can buy groceries, and you can pay your water bill, and you can pay your light bill, and so forth. And your children can go to school knowing that they're getting to school on time, and knowing that they're safe when they're coming home. And so, when people criticize me for saying that I am giving a handout, I say, Father, forgive them, forgive them for they know what they say. And I do not want to pretend that I am a pastor because I do not, I, when I see Reverend Dodds here and I see my friend here from Canada who are great preacher men and so forth, I do not want to usurp their responsibilities. But they will agree with me that when the good Lord comes back to judge the living and the dead, he's not going to ask us how many times you pray, how many times you go to church. He's going to ask us, what have you done for the least of my brothers? So my friends, being negative and being destructive will never build a country. We'll never make life better for any family in Dominica. We'll not make this constituency better. You need people who care about people and who love people because politics is not about papers and files. Politics is about people. And if you do not love a people, there is no way on God's earth you can lead them. Because leadership requires tremendous personal sacrifices. And if you are not prepared to make personal sacrifices, you have to be aware of these people because it is said, many are called but few are chosen. Politics is a vocation, it's not a job. And if you see it as a job, yes, Perchance you may make it, but you'll never survive because you do not understand that it is a vocation. It's not a job. Because when you're dealing with people, it cannot be about a job. Likewise, being a pastor or priest is a vocation. It's not a job. You can never call it a job. Because of the tremendous sacrifices that you have to make to lead as Peter did. Living his trade and following Christ. To become fishers of men. Peter was preoccupied with his fishing, but Christ told him, no, leave us alone. Sacrifices. And so I am very happy to be here. And so the housing, and we could have built 5,000 homes since the hurricane. Had we decided to give people plywood and galvanize and some nails? No. 
We want to ensure that every family, whether you're from Roseau, or from Vickers, or you're from West Hill, from Marigot, wherever you're from in Dominica, that we give you the same quality of housing, the same standard of housing, because we do not want to have any class situation in our country. Everyone is equal. So there's no design for this part and design for that part. We're giving everybody the same thing across the board in Dominica. And I have been seeing, sometimes you do these things and you don't appreciate the impact it's having on people because you're not paying attention to this sometimes. But when I see the people and the expressions on their faces who have come up thus far to pick up their letters of commitment or the keys, how can one really criticize this? You know, and when the people give you the stories, you know, there are some of us who the Lord has blessed and we can go to the bank or the credit union and walk in there for papers and get a loan and build our homes. But the fact remains there will be some who will never be able to even enter the door. They have no papers. They are unable to do so. And what do we do? What do we say? Do we tell them go and pray and go and say a rosary? They have prayed already. They have said their rosary. And they're coming to us as the, as the servants of the Lord to assist them. And if we can, we, yes, we do. If we cannot, then we'll say, well, we'll see how, we, how things can work out. So I'm very happy for you here in Wesley and we are ready to start. We, wanted, we didn't want to come and start and not share with you the plans so you can have your views on it. And if you tell me, Scary, what, you saw, what I saw tonight, I'm okay with roll the dice and so on. We will roll the dice and we'll start, right? We'll move away. We'll start. We can move immediately to start clearing the sites and start, and start the construction. Because I am, not, I am not in the business of making jokes with people's lives in the future. I, that's not why I came to politics for. This is why... When I tell you I'm going to do something, I will do it. It may take a little time, but I will do it. I do not make false promises to people. I do not give people expectations that I know I cannot deliver upon. If you come to me for assistance, and I tell you, my brother, no, I can't give you all that, I can give you this, I'll keep my promise. So we, I am here to tell you that these homes are for real. With regards to health, and health facilities, we have signed the contract for the construction of the new health center in Wesley. And of course, on the, on the top floor, we have a residence for the district nurse, so she'll have a comfortable place to, to reside as well. And we have also signed, and I see my friends from Marigot there, and of course, the Marigot Hospital serves the entire Marigot Health District. From Calibishi, all the way back to Atkinson, I believe, maybe up to Bataka, including Concord and so forth. And we have signed the contract for the construction of the Marigold Hospital. This Marigold Hospital, well, this Marigold Health District Hospital, <laughs> no face. It is, it is, it is costing. Just to build it, just to build it alone, not to equip it, just to build it the basic furniture is costing $32 million. And there are some people who have demonstrated, they say they want the hospital. They have given people the impression that Scary doesn't want to build the hospital. And now that Scary is building, they say they don't want it. They don't want it. Now that we are starting the hospital, I would believe that there will be celebration. We will bring sugar fire on the streets and we'll have a big band playing in the streets. Finally, hospital reach. But you know, my friends, we have to take this thing seriously, you know. Because we must not allow people who say they want to lead us to play games with our future. 
If you are genuine about something, my brother, and you agitate for it, rightly so, you have a right to demonstrate for something that you believe that you should have. That's fine with me. But if it's going to happen and it's happening, you should be celebrating, you should be happy that it's happening. That's what it is. And I find that there's some people in this country, everything that is positive in this country, they criticize. The homes are being built, they criticize the homes. Hotels are being built, they criticize the hotels. I, that's not how I knew things were in Dominica. When Rosie would come to Wesley, Rosie came to Wesley to educate us, to inform us of what's happening in the world and Dominica. Rosie is the first one who came to tell us, to tell us about the banana industry and the challenges that the banana industry is going to have years before it started happening. And Rosie would come here and, and get young boys and young girls to send them to university to become doctors and architects and nurses. That's what we came here to do. We didn't come here to create mayhem and destruction and mislead people. We came here to inform, educate, and elevate people. And you know, you here in Wesley, Marigot, you are hardworking people, you are industrious people. And I think you have an opportunity to, to see your communities really get into where we all for years have and decades have yearned for it to be. And I believe that you have found someone, a young person, who can invest the next 25 years of his life to assist in guiding that process. In guiding that process. And do not make a mistake, my dear brothers and sisters. Voting is not something that one should play games with. It is not something that we should put our personal ambition ahead of the greater good of the country and the community. We cannot be personal with our votes. We have to look at the greater good of the community, the greater good of the country. If Wesley prospers, if we get the airport for Wesley, all of us, all of us will benefit from it. Everyone else will benefit from it. And so, this election is coming up, is a serious one, and it's one that we all must take very seriously. This will decide whether the country continues on the trajectory that it is now on, or whether it will come to a crashing halt. Because this world has changed so dramatically in the last 10, 15 years. The world has become, this thing about global village is a myth. It's all man for himself in this world today. You see the trade wars. Countries don't help countries anymore as they used to do before. Because, and I don't blame some of them because they have so many challenges within their own countries that they have to deal with it. But we thank God for Dominica still having friends that still look out for us while so many have decided to look inwards. There are still a handful of countries that look outward, outward and help people, countries like Dominica. And I will tell you more about this in my Independence Day address on Sunday. In respect to agriculture, we believe that we have to seek to modernize agriculture a bit, utilize more technology. And this is why we are seeking to promote things like hydroponics, growing more food in a smaller space of land. Greenhouse technology, looking at new crops, seeing what we can supply the hotels as far as possible. Because we're going to have a serious market here in Dominica when these hotels are constructed. Because there is a study done on the impact of the hotels on Dominica. 
And just with the few hotels that are coming on stream now, not including those we, we, they, we have at the back coming, it is estimated that these hotels will bring in $140 million annually to Dominica in direct foreign exchange. And $44 million in tax revenue to the Treasury. And so you can understand the impact it's going to have on the country. And this is why I'm saying that we as young people, we have to position ourselves. We have to train ourselves. We have to educate ourselves to ensure this happens. And we've been doing all of this in Dominica. Not complaining about how difficult it is, because I can tell you, as I've said before, if I am to complain about how difficult it is, it is to run this country, I will be complaining to you every single day. But you know, leaders will not place to cry about challenges. Leaders will place to find solutions to challenges. And so I preoccupy my mind with finding solutions to the challenges of the country and solutions to the challenges of individual families. And that's what we're seeking to do, and that's what we're doing. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm happy to be in Wesley with you tonight to present to you the plans for health care, the plans for housing, and the economic plan for this place centered around the International Airport. And I believe I am more sure that the International Airport will come than tomorrow is Thursday morning. And so I, I urge us to work together. The airport will happen as long as you in Wesley Woodfordale continue to be as cooperative as you have been. Because, you know, I was always worried about what would be the reaction of the people. Because to tell people to, to leave their homes and so on has been, it, it worked on my mind. And then I was pleasantly, I, this is why I'm stressing this point. I was really, really honestly, pleasantly surprised of the positive reaction of property owners. People were calling us and telling us, my brother, come and take your land, come and take your house, ready to go. That is how positive some people were um, and have been in, re in response to this and so on. Because I know that's something that we have yearned for for so long and this will, it will happen. And you know, sometimes people come here and say to you, that Skerritt hasn't done anything in 20 years. But we know, we all know, how Dominica was when Skerritt became Prime Minister. And when we came into office in 2000. And I would spend time reacting to this. But you all know how things were in this country. And on top of this, we have been impacted by numerous storms and hurricanes. In 2010, a tropical storm. 2013, another storm. 2015, Erica. And 2017, Maria. And with Erica at 90% of your GDP impacted and Maria 226% of your GDP impacted, my brothers and sisters, this is impossible for a country to have gone through this and still stand in today. And this is why I say to people, do not give me the praise for this. Give the Lord the praise for this. Not me. And I find it extraordinary when I say this and some church leaders take me to task for this. That I say, give the Lord the praise. And I'm just an instrument that the Lord is using on earth to carry out his work.
But I thank you and I want you to ask you to give Mr. Grant your support. I believe that you, you have in him somebody who understands what personal development is and who can guide the youth in the right direction. And I think he is a young man that we should all be proud of in this part of Dominica. And I'm not saying this because he is there, neither am I saying this because he is a candidate of my party. But I have the greatest personal respect for him and for his achievements and for his understanding of the development of Dominica. And I believe that the future of this part of Dominica and the future of Dominica is bright. Uh, having such industrious, well-rounded young man like Greg Grant availing himself to the development of Dominica. The truth is, the truth is, I wish I could vote in Wesley. <laughs> Just to vote for him. But thank you very much. You know, I'm happy to be here tonight. Always a pleasure to be in this constituency. I have so many, so many friends here. Especially the senior citizens of this constituency. From all the way to Woodfordale, you know, very, very wonderful people, very respectful people, you know. And I think if we can work more closely together, because this election is not about Roosevelt's carry. It is not about the Dominican Labour Party. It is about the future of Dominica. And the need for us to work together for the greater good of our country. And if our country prospers, and succeed, all of us will benefit from this. All of us. All of us will benefit from this. So I, I thank you for the courtesy of listening to me. And I, I'm saying to you that I'm very excited about this, this part. And the young people in particular, let us continue to take advantage of the education and training opportunities. We have to prepare ourselves to take advantage, full advantage of the opportunities. And I am, I am satisfied and I am very hopeful that the Lord will provide to us. And I want to finally say about MMC, because you will hear a lot about MMC. They have been an extraordinary partner of Dominic. And they have partners, partnered with us to help revolutionize the construction of housing in Dominica. An exceptional part. And so what we do is that they are the developers, they take the risk, and we provide the financing utilizing the Silency by Investment program. So in large measure, they front load the expenditure. And we basically reimburse them utilizing the Silency by Investment program. If we do not have such partners, it means therefore that we would have to go to the banks to borrow money to do all these things for you and for us in Dominica. And how much can we really borrow a small country like ours? You run the risk of placing yourself in, in serious difficulties. And so we have found a very interesting formula. And when men and some, a few men and women criticizing us for, for using that formula to build homes in Dominica, there's one European country that has adopted that policy. And you know, the good thing about this is that what is indifferent. And the United States, for example, they have the same thing, you know. But they, they build the homes and the developer owns the homes. And he sells it to homeowners. In Dominica, the government owns the homes and we give it to our citizens who end up getting a title for these homes. And so they have a piece of Dominica. So they, and all of the housing belongs to the state and the state passes on to the citizens 
and we provide a title eventually to the homeowner. So these homes we are building for you in Wesley and Woodfordale, you will have a title, a certificate of title for your home that you can pass on to your children when you're writing your will and so on. Because we want you to ensure that you are empowered. You are empowered and how best can we empower people by giving them an asset. An asset. A home and a piece of land. Something, a home is something that all of us as human beings and all animals in the animal kingdom look forward to owning a home. Some of us, we try by getting old piece of plywood here and there on a construction site. We pull a galvanized here, we get some drums, we cut it and we flatten it and we knock it here because we want to find a shelter for our families. There are some of us who are renting. Rent these days in Dominica is very high. Sometimes the lights don't work, the plumbing don't work. And that's what people are subjected to. And that is what we're seeking to address once and for all in Dominica. And by the, by the grace of God, this will happen. We will succeed. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you and God bless our country. Thank you very much. I say thank you to the Honorable Prime Minister. At this time, I would like to invite Mr. Fidel Grant from the community of, Wood of Wesley to give us a vote of thanks. The Honorable Prime Minister, members of Cabinet, invited guests, my people of Wesley, Woodford Hill and Palm Tree, Good evening. I stand before you. I stand before you with immense joy following the pronouncements which were made here tonight. I am filled with joy because I know that this constituency is ready to take flight to be in the beacon of the Northeast. The opportunities which are about to open to us are immeasurable and we must place ourselves in the right position to take full advantage of the international airport. As for the housing project, there is no doubt that this will be done. Look around at the other communities and I feel confident that this too will be done in Wesley. This housing project is necessary, especially Following Hurricane Maria, where many families who do not have land could not rebuild. Just a few months ago, I stood on a different platform and I announced to you that there were plans. This evening, these plans are being presented to you. And ladies and gentlemen, the good people of Wesley Woodford Hill and Palm Tree, the next time I stand on these matters, it will be for ribbon cutting and handing over of keys. <laughs> to the government, on behalf of all of us here, I say thank you. And we look forward to the start of these projects. To my people, before I end, I would just like to remind you to reject the message of doom and gloom. In the following days, we will hear a lot of negative, and I ask you to reject it. But most importantly, do not engage in any sort of violence or any sort of debate which could lead to violence. In many countries around the world, even as close as Guadeloupe, you have housing programs where the government builds homes for many people those of whom who cannot afford a home. In the mighty America, 
You have people who have worked for many decades and still cannot own a home. So do not let these distractors steal your blessings and your joy. Let us work together to build a better Wesley. Let us work together to build a better Dominica. I would like to thank all of you for coming out here under this weather. Let's try to get home safe. Thank you and have a good evening. And this come this At this time, I would like to invite the general public, if you have any questions or comments, we can give you an opportunity. we we'll give you a minimum of one minute. Hey, good night, everybody. Well, tonight, I'm not calling nobody name. I just saying good night to the whole house. Now, I heard the Prime Minister talk about People are saying he have hand out. But in the red, when you give, you will receive. And that is why today we have a Prime Minister doing his utmost best to help Dominicans because he's receiving. Now in the blue, you have one are just receiving from his supporters and doesn't give his supporters. So that is why they haven't got nothing and they will never have nothing and they shall was because we give in. Now one more thing I have to say. In the blue, there is a liar, a perfect liar. And it is easier for a liar to be a lawyer than a prime minister. Good night. Yes, good night. Um, in regards of housing, I cannot, I understand I cannot have a remodel house now because I got a start from the government to be frank, but I cannot complete my house. I will try to build a, a resilient house myself, but I cannot complete it. It's lacking a roof and a little porch. The government really assists me. I accept it gracefully, but it cannot do the things I want to do. And I, I want a comfortable home. It's time, since the hurricane, I've been living without a house. I'm living with families. And I would like the government to take in consideration me and at least give me a, a completion because I've, I've done the basic already. My name is Archibald Prince from this community. Thank you, Archie. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Yeah, good night. Good night, everyone. Yeah? Good night. Good night. Irene. You're talking about housing now? Yeah. No, my daughter, her name is Sasha Zavi. Long time ago, she said to me, they have on, on lease for a house. And she have a lot of babies and a grand, her father always taking care of them. And I ain't seen nothing about her getting something. So I would like to know from the people and them, how oh, my daughter going to get there because she have babies and then she living in a spot where she needed 100%. I didn't say they're living airy, but she need more space. And that thing on for a long time. I want to know, the lady was in charge of that is the Afinia lady. And I ain't saying nothing and my daughter really need that stuff. Don't worry about me, my daughter. Thank you. Thank you, Raja. And I could cut a lot of costs by helping her. So speed up, please. All right? I have some other questions, you know, and stuff, but this is major. Come, Reverend. Come, Reverend. Honorable, Honorable Prime Minister, 
I believe in the development of every community. There needs to be the gathering of people together at some point, at some place. So as we try to rebuild Wesley, Woodford Hill, and wherever, but Wesley in particular now, I think there needs to be something in the rebuilding like a community center where the people of Wesley could meet for meetings and weddings, where they could meet for theatrical plays. We had a very good start at Wesley. And the building was knocked down by Maria. I, I, I suggested to our next pal rep, we, we need to rebuild that place so that our people could have some place where they can meet, gather. If the community cannot gather at some place, we are going to be in trouble. I know it's not housing for individuals, but housing for the community. Please let us have the community center near to the Wesley Methodist Church restored. And if you can do that, I believe our people are going to be a stronger community. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll entertain two more questions as it's getting late. Mm -hmm. Good night. Honorable Prime Minister, um, Ashes and Christmas. Um, but yesterday, yesterday, somebody else. Um, part of my property have been taken by the for this for this international airport I've been to the Strongland office twice um, the first time they told me that I can get land for land land in replacement of my property which came to or as money or money and land. I told them that I have purchased this portion of land for my children and I have to find out from them their decision and all of them tell me land for land. I went back and I ask the man in charge whether that I can get they can show me a portion on the London real estate which he told me that thing. if that is satisfactory to me I can refer back to my children and up to now I haven't got a word from them I would like you to give me the assurance that when I'll be able to get to that portion where I would like to have for my children because I haven't got long to see here again. Yes, and there are many other individuals who are in the same situation and in reference to the question Mr. Christmas has asked. We have all the information, we will analyze the data, and once we have come up, we will come back to you. And because land is a private matter, we will deal with each individual in a private capacities. But we won't be able to discuss it openly in the, in the in a forum. However, there is a response to this on a personal level. Thank you. Let's entertain one more question and we'll have to go. One more question, because it's okay, getting good. late and it's heavy. <laughs> good night, Mr. PM, and good night to everybody. Um, I want to take the time up to congratulate the Dominica Labour Party and the Prime Minister for bringing Dominica from crisis in 2000 onto the process of recovery in 2019. Now, Mr. PM, um, Marigot is the exit and entrance to the Douglas Charles Airport. And I want to congratulate you on lighting the path from 
Melvin and towards Marigot. My question is, are there possibilities of putting some lights from Melvin Hall or Douglas Charles onto Wesley, seeing that Wesley is the entrance and exit for the northern part of Dominica? The, the response to your question is yes. Yes, yes. Not only you will, we will be putting street lights really from the Douglas Charles all the way back to Portsmouth. Okay, so, yeah. And then we have street lights from Portsmouth all the way to Roseau. So all of the main arteries in the country will be putting street lights there. So, I, I mean, we just drove up there and the next phase is to put the lights from the airport, go back towards Portsmouth and so on. All right, thank you. So this comes to the end of our proceedings tonight. Let us thank you all. There's a little refreshment across. Be careful on the road. It's raining heavily. And we thank you very much for showing up and being a great audience. Thank you very much.